Okay, well I was lent a copy of the Geneva Bible to make a quick video on and uh, this came out as you can see in 1560 and uh, it's got some interesting footnotes inside and down the side as you can see you've got the little uh, drop-in menus if you will and you can just uh, go straight to the part of scripture that you want and uh, away you go so this will just be a very short video going through this uh, pre-1611 King James Bible and the first paragraph caught my attention it says that uh, 1560 was a landmark in the history of the English Bible this Bible is second in importance only to the authorized version so they are quite content to put the Geneva uh, second place after the King James Bible jump into the first book of the Bible which of course is Genesis and uh, as you can see it's Old English and uh, it's not very easy to read so this will be filmed in high definition hopefully you can read the text and uh, as always pause it and read it at your own leisure a couple of things that came to my mind when I first had a look at this was the comments going down on the left hand side and the right hand side and of course that is found in Phineas's Dakes uh, reference Bible and uh, some artistic liberty has perhaps been used here but uh, the footnotes are very good very helpful very small as I say so if you are poor of sight then a, a magnifying glass might be of some help to you but uh, I'll just finish filming the comments uh, or as we call them footnotes and then you can go back and read the text and then compare the two not very easy filming in HD without it going out of focus so my apologies if you find it difficult to read pause it like I say and read it at your own leisure okay uh, Genesis 1 1 and it reads in the beginning God created heaven and the earth and the earth was without form spelt with an E and void and darkness was upon the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters and of course it's slightly different to the AV and what surprised me was the and is used as a symbol not A and D and of course that's probably done to save space and of course in modern English that would be rather poor grammar but uh, like I say they get a lot of uh, text on a limited sheet of paper then God said spelt with an F let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God separated the light from the darkness and God and God called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day this is similar to the original 1611 uh, Elizabethan English and uh, I think it's true to say that the AV would have used some of the mannerisms from the Geneva Bible going back to Tyndale's original masterpiece so that is the part of Genesis that I wanted to show you also uh, what's reminiscent is the drawings and of course the MacArthur study Bible which I've also done a video on has quite a few pictures and diagrams whereas Dakes to the best of my knowledge doesn't have any so my first thoughts were that the Geneva Bible is similar to MacArthur's and similar to Dakes uh, another quick draw I want to show you if I can get to it was Noah's Ark and interesting that they suggest this would be the shape of Noah's Ark and you see the people there drowning and of course when the second advent comes I think somebody said two and a half billion would have been wiped out before Christ returns another quick footnote there from uh, Genesis 7 I think they use the Roman numerals or numerals I should say uh, where are we? there we are and the Lord said unto Noah enter thou and all thine house into the ark for thee have I fiend that will be found found righteous before me in this age the problem with today's English and I said this in other videos is that most people don't know English very well 
and that's a failure of uh, modern education that uh, the level of uh, English isn't as it used to be so when people get to the Word of God they struggle they struggle to understand it and uh, they end up making statements which are ignorance this edition of the Geneva Bible has the Apocrypha in and I'll just try and get to it now and uh, show you that Malachi finishes and I'll just film it so you can see it for yourself where are we Malachi last chapter of course it ends with uh, where are we verse 6 quite a bit of uh, text at the bottom which I'll just try and zoom in and you can see what they say about uh, this part of Holy Writ John the Baptist and Elijah of course mentioned at the end of Malachi and then straight away we come across the Apocrypha which was never inspired the Jews never accepted it and to this day have never received it as the Word of God and yet the Geneva Bible put it in as did the King James Bible and it was Charles Spurgeon I believe who wanted it taken out and therefore it was taken out but that was 200 years later and I hope to do a video possibly in the new year on the King James uh, and the Textus Receptus but for now this is the first book in the Apocrypha and if you've ever read the Apocrypha you know it's quite a dry uh, collection of books it doesn't flow like the Old Testament and the New Testament and it's simply inserted as you can see I can just pan back between Malachi and then straight into the Apocrypha no footnote to explain it this isn't canonical but again the people of that generation probably knew that it wasn't canonical Tobit just want to keep going through there's quite a few of these uh, non-inspired writings and of course the Catholic Church accept them in fact they need them uh, because they get purgatory from 2nd Maccabees uh, but the Jews never accepted it as uh, scriptural the Apostles and the Lord Jesus Christ never quote from the Apocrypha and then we go into the Gospel of Matthew in fact just before I get to there here's a, another diagram another drawing I should say I hope you can see that I hope the light's not too uh, dark Samaria uh, Capernaum, Nazareth again these little drawings are quite uh, quite nice I like them and you find some of these in the MacArthur Study Bible but uh, not handwritten as far as I can remember but they are uh, computer generated this has obviously been done from an initial drawing and then copied into the Geneva Bible the Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ spelt with an I according to Matthew spelt with an E again Old English uh, which was corrected in the 1769 King James Bible and I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to read uh, the opening text so I'll just pause it or just keep filming this for the time being you can pause it and read it at your own leisure uh, again it takes a little bit of getting used to but it's not impossible to read from Matthew's Gospel and uh, I checked last night that uh, Hebrews isn't credited to the Apostle Paul and uh, the reason I wanted to check that was because there's two groups the first group say that Paul wrote it and the other group said he did not write it and uh, the Geneva Bible says that uh, Paul isn't the author in fact I've got a few moments I'll just uh, go to it now and show you uh, for those of you that may be interested where are we the epistle to the Hebrews and again I don't know how easy it will be for you to read this so you can pause it and blow it up to full screen and read it what does the scripture say here it says uh, uh, sundry times and in, in diverse manners God spake in old time to our fathers by the prophets capital P and hath the last days has he spoken to us by his son spelt with an e whom he hath made heir of all things by whom 
he also made the worlds. So similar to the King James translation. Uh, in fact, if you haven't got an original 1611, and I haven't got an original 1611, then it's, it's not so easy to compare uh, the two translations. But uh, the beginning of this did say that uh, it was second only to the King James Bible. And uh, those of us, or those of you, I should say, that are more knowledgeable in the manuscripts and uh, the Synaticus and Vaticanus and the Textus Receptus uh, will no doubt have some interesting comments to make uh, on this video. But uh, from the top of my head, I believe that the manuscripts that underpin the Geneva Bible are from the correct line the correct family of manuscripts and uh, some have even said this is a true pure Protestant uh, translation. You've got a lot of uh, footnotes in here but uh, just zoom in here but uh, what we can't say really is uh, whether or not this would have endured. The King James of course came out in 1611 and has sold I think 800 million copies to date and this edition did vanish so what you could say in conclusion I suppose that the Lord didn't want this to go around the world he didn't want this aversion to be the bedrock of the British Empire but he wanted the King James Bible to be the bedrock and of course it has been and it remains the Word of God but uh, my final thoughts on this would be to Get, it, get a copy of this for your own library and uh, if nothing else enjoy the footnotes and uh, as always compare everything in light of scripture.